Hello, welcome back to the Archuria Pigments 3 tutorial series. Today we're having a look at the Wavetable engine. And because it's quite a big subject, I'm going to split it into two. In the second part, we'll have a look at the modulation options. And today we're just going to cover the basics of Wavetable synthesis. First things first, what's a Wavetable? Well, it literally is a table of waves. In Pigments, you can have up to 256 individual entries in this thing called a wavetable and each one of those entries is the representation of a single cycle of a wave. Have a look at what we can see on the screen at the moment. What you see there is a wavetable with four entries. You can have up to 256 but you don't have to have 256. This one's just got four. You can also see that one of them is currently blue. That's de determined by the position knob. If I turn this position knob up. eventually it's going to snap to the second entry in the table and then up to the third and then finally the fourth. Wherever the position knob is that's the sound you're going to hear. So the wavetable engine is going to generate a tone using that wave. It's going to basically play that wave over and over again and depending on what your pitch is, in other words how many times per second that wave is output, you're going to hear a tone here we hear a sine tone. Now that is not a sine tone as you would imagine coming out of the analog engine for instance. The analog engine builds its own sound from scratch every time you hit a key. It uses oscillators to generate those tones. That's not how a wavetable operates. The wavetable is basically a sample player. It's playing this wave back a number of times per second equal to the pitch of the key that you just hit. Now the real power of wavetables comes when we move from one position in the table to another. So if I move this position knob, we're going to switch to a triangle wave, and then a saw, and then a square. Now that's all very well and good, but wouldn't it be lovely if we could morph gradually between each of those waves? Well, obviously we can. And now because I've stopped in between these two positions, you can see that the blue line is morphing between them. It's figuring out what the difference is between the amplitudes of each of those um, individual waves and it's generating a, a composite or a, a merged output for the, of the two. So every position in between those two waves gives us a very slightly different waveform output. So even though there's four entries in the table, there's a hell of a lot more than four different varieties of sound that we can output with this thing. So what actually is an entry in the wavetable? It's actually 2048 individual slices of time, individual amplitudes or samples that comprise together to form the composite um, appearance of the wave. So if we switch to the 2D mode, now we're looking at one single entry in the table. So there you see the sine wave. So now if you imagine 2048 tiny little dots, they're so close together that they actually draw a completely smooth curve. But they are individual samples in their own right. Let's switch back to 3D mode. So now we can see all the entries in the table. And I'm going to click on the basic waveforms name. Now you see a list of presets that we can pick from. All the ones with the Archuria symbol are um, factory presets. These, we can't do anything with these, these are read only, but there are a lot of them. So if I pick the chunky tone, so now having single clicked, that value is actually in my wavetable now. If I press the cross, then you can see that it's loaded it up. If you want to just load and get straight back to the editor, double click. And now we're going to get a different sound. We're going to get a much more complex shape. freeze it in the oscilloscope and this is a representation of that wave. In 2D mode that's what it looks like and if I was to zoom out sufficiently you would get a very accurate representation of that wave. So this is one entry in the table and that's me morphing between all of them. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven entries in this table. You can see that we've also got a wavetable volume as distinct from the master volume output. So 
these two things combine. Turn the, vo the, the wavetable volume down. And as you'll see in the following episode, we'll be able to use that to blend with the modulator options. We'll get there later. Once you've selected a preset, you can click the forward and backward arrows to cycle through the various wavetables. That's pretty straightforward stuff. You can also see down below, we've got a couple of folders um, that I've created manually. I'm going to click the little folder icon. And now it's asking us to import some wavetables. Now a wavetable is just a WAV file. Now because of the particular requirements of pigments, each entry in the wavetable contains 2,048 samples. The largest number of entries that any individual wavetable can hold is 256. And so if you've got an audio file, with 524,000 or fewer um, samples in it, then you can load the entire thing into a wavetable. If your one file is bigger than that, then it's just going to import the first 524,000, whatever it is, 288 samples. So I'm gonna import one of these folders from my drums and percussion um, samples on my uh, sample data disk. Let's load the timpani. And now you can see the different timpani wavetables. Don't forget, this was originally an actual WAV file. If I was to load that WAV file into a media player, it would sound like a timpani. But of course, we've just turned it into something completely different. So I'll load one of these. And there you can see the wavetable. Now you can also see that the vast majority of it is very uninteresting. Lots of these are almost completely flat lines. So if I press a key right now, you're not really going to get any sound. But if I scroll through the position knob, let's have a look at it in 2D mode. Then you can find, you know, it doesn't sound like a timpani anymore because that's one tiny, tiny time slice. I say I don't particularly care for those samples as the basis for creation of wavetables. No problem. If I hover over the timpani section, as I move to the right hand side, I get a cross. Now it's deleted all of those entries out of my uh, wavetable library. Let's load an individual um, wave file now, just one single wave. Click on the little sample symbol, little wave symbol there. And let's have a look in, let's try snares. And in 3D view, we can see a very short, short period of time as a tiny little snare, just enough to generate seven entries in the table. The first three of which are kind of interesting. So having said that those first three entries in the table are interesting, let's create something that can actually modulate between them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my LFO and I'm going to map it to the position knob. And now you can see the LFO having an increasing effect on the distance through the table that we sweep. Now don't forget this um, LFO is bipolar. If I move the knob, you can see that it's oscillating around the center point, but I actually want it to stick on zero for half the time, so I'm perfectly happy with that behavior. Weird but cool. And this is where you feel a bit like an alchemist when you're playing with wavetables. This is a snare. You can find anything with a remotely strong wave shape, then it's gonna make a really interesting uh, wavetable entry. If we change our mind and decide we're not particularly fond of that, then we've got the ability to delete individual um, wavetable entries as well. Click on the cross and it's gone. It is worth noting though, even though I've deleted it out of my library, it is still loaded into this, um, into this engine. So we've still got the entire wavetable. We just no longer have it in our library. 
Now that's only half the story, even though we've taken this humble snare sound and turned it into something completely other. We have an extremely rich set of modulation options available to us, and we'll take a look at those in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please hit like if you did, and I'll see you for part two. Thanks a lot.